Welcome to another episode of the Room for Nuance podcast. I'm Sean DeMars here with our guest, Jonathan Coswell. Uh, will you open us in prayer? I'd love to, yeah. Father, we love you and we thank you for a new day where your mercies are new and we we need them. And uh, we thank you so much for, for Christ, for his, his death, his resurrection. We thank you that his righteousness is ours, not because we deserve mm. it, because of your your gift and we we cling to that. We have nothing of ourselves to bring and we want mm-hmm. to elevate Christ. We want him to to be greater and, and us to be less. So please, as we, as we chat now, would you help that to be the case? For those listening, whatever uh, they're walking through uh, right now, may they know uh, your, your presence, may they know you, mm. may they walk with you uh, closely in the power of your Holy Spirit. So Father, be with us, please, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, yes. Um, Luke, we're probably going to have to do like an AI translator thing for these videos. <laughs> I don't know that any of our viewers are going to be able to understand me. me yeah. Yeah, that, that's normal. Throw another dingo on the bobby, <laughs> eh? <laughs> that's a different country, but I'll let you off. You're I, from South Africa? No. South from, Africa. No, I'm the, from England. England. Uh, yes, I'm sort of down to Abbey. Oh. But. Okay, what is the difference between... <laughs> we're getting to the, to the important issues quickly. Straight up, yeah. What's the difference between... England and Britain. Oh, right. So, um, yeah, it's a bit confusing because there's there's Great Britain, uh, which we add Northern Ireland. So Great Britain is the uh, Scotland, England, and Wales. Okay. And then we add Northern Ireland. And then England is the country England. The country, yeah. And, uh, and then we have the United Kingdom, which is... Uh, no, I think that's England, Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland, all together. It's wow. a bit confusing. Yeah. yeah. Basically, we used to own everybody. <laughs> you really and, did. And then I've slowly sold you off or yes. had to let you go. So yeah. So that's, that's the way it goes. Yeah, you guys are really on the decline, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, we're getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, now, little interesting um, factoid about me is that I can do an English accent yes. for well, any any part of England, right? Right. So um, like Cockney, right? Cool. You know, like... like Hello, governor, right? Like I can do that, right? But name yeah. another place in England and uh, I can... Okay, uh, what about Geordie, Newcastle? Uh, that's an obvious one, but I'll do it anyways. Now, <laughs> you, you got to have a refined ear for this yes. r- to hear the subtle... <laughs> Hello, governor. You see how I can... Wow. Yeah. It, it's almost like you are a Geordie. <laughs> And you just oh, yeah. switch like that. Just, yeah. 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 I won't do the rest. No, I mean, I could, we could keep I, I going. I trust you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what part of uh, the UK are you from? Well, you'll know because you'll be able to speak it. <laughs> Obviously. So, uh, a place called Leeds. So, it's oh, in the Leeds, north classic. of England. Yeah. If, yeah. if people follow soccer, then I they, follow that lead. Yeah. Uh, and, ooh, Ugh, uh, terrible. So, in the north of England, it's halfway between Edinburgh and London. Okay. So right in the middle, basically. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at Manchester United or I'm Arsenal? I'm a Liverpool fan, actually. You're so a what? I'm a Liverpool fan. Okay. Yeah. Is so. that good or bad? I, well, it's good now. They're top of the league. So okay. yeah, probably not by the time this airs, but <laughs> yeah. we are at the moment. And are you a hooligan? No. Okay. Were you before you got saved? Um, no. No. Okay. No. I'm, I'm a gentle guy. No. Um, no. I just uh, would quietly sit in the stands. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. sort of passive aggressively root against the other team. Yeah. Little, yeah. Just, okay. you know, squint my eyes and yeah. go, boo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to accidentally spill some tea yeah, on the opposing. That's right. <laughs> okay. Now we, we're like deep into this episode. Nobody knows who you are. Not a clue. Uh, if you, they're still listening. If they're still amazed. listening, uh, you started the website 10 of those, right? Yeah, it's, right. it's literally the number 10 of yeah. those.com. All the letters. Yeah. 10 of those.com. Yeah. And what you sell like cheap Chinese merchandise. What? A bit like that. No. Okay. So uh, I was a youth pastor in Northern Ireland yeah. um, and began just as a hobby and picking out some books that I, I knew and loved buying them a thousand at a time okay. and then selling them in tens. And it was just a hobby. It was a sort of side thing to do at a, a weekend. Did you but make money off of that? No, really, not in those okay. days. Okay. Um, no, I probably lost a lot actually. But um, yeah. but the, the drive behind it was there are loads of books out there. Yeah. How do you know what's good? How do you know what's bad? How do you know what's going to actually do you some spiritual harm? So what I wanted to do was pick off books that I knew and, and loved, knew that they held to the Bible mm-hmm. and just get them out in a big way. The, the initial thing were, that I was trying to do in a, can I say this? 
in uh -huh. a non-Mark Driscoll way was to influence yeah. the sales charts. It wasn't my own book that I was doing it with, but yeah. what I wanted to do was get in a lot of good stuff, sell it and see good stuff go higher up the, the, the publishing yeah. chart so that publishers then thought, hey, we should be doing more stuff that holds yeah. the Bible by this author or th that topic, or et cetera. Now, now wait, real quick, you said the non-Mark Driscoll way because Mark Driscoll would buy 10,000, Mars Hill yeah, would buy yeah. 10,000 copies of whatever new book he came, yeah. uh, published so that it would, what? They'd cook the numbers basically They'd, yeah. to, to make it a, a bestseller because it's then self-fulfilling, a bestseller continues uh -huh. to sell and et cetera. So, that's so you thing. said, okay, that's really carnal, but here's a non-carnal way to do that. Yeah, I, this, this was just a legitimate way of how can I get it out in volume? And the way yeah. that happened really was by negotiating big discounts, but then also passing it on. Okay. And, you know, my frustration with the bookstores uh, at the time <laughs> was, one, they were selling a lot of stuff that would do people harm. Yeah. But it was all fully, you know, it was um, full price, nothing discounted. If you bought more, you'd still pay full price. Yeah. And, and you're talking about brick and mortar bookstores. Yeah. So which, this was 2008 when, when there were some when, around. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> and so... Yep, sold in tens, and uh, you had to buy ten at the time. That's where the name came from. Ten of those. We didn't have a website or anything. It was all done by email at this point, just emailing out deals. To Wait, say, did you have like a newsletter? How do people um, know to no, reach out? Just to you? Um, I. Uh, this was before kind of data protection type thing. So I would just borrow people's email lists and say, "Look, pass this on wherever borrow, you can." Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, and you could at that point. Yeah. And um, and just say, "Look, spread the word." And yeah, so it's word spread. of mouth. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, like, are we talking like 10 people would hit you up a week, 50 people? So I bought three books by a guy called Vaughn Roberts. So yeah. some people might know his, his book, God's Big Picture. So There's good. Three others uh, of his. I bought a thousand of each, which was all the publisher had at the time. Okay. Bought them for 99p, which in today's sort of dollar is about 125. And I sold them for the equivalent of $2.50. So two pounds. Wow. But you had to buy 10. That included your shipping. Yeah. But I knew by the end of the month, um, Amex would be needing the bill to be paid on my credit card. So I just knew I had to sell them all by that time, or at least half of them to, yeah. to cover the bill. And they were gone in a week. Oh, wow. Now, does Vaughn make any money? Like, for example, yep. did he make money off of that? Yeah. So when a publisher sells to a retailer like us, um, a, a, an author will get a percentage of that sale price. So it actually doesn't matter what I'm selling them for, whether I sell them for $10 or $1. Yeah. He's already made a percentage from his royalty yeah. of what they've sold it to to me for. So you were teaming up with Vaughn Roberts to make him rich. Uh, kind of, no. <laughs> uh, no, in fact, at our prices, um, they're probably not making anything at all. But, yeah. uh, um, but... Wait, hold on. That sounds like you're saying opposite things. I asked you, did he make money? And you said yes. And then yeah. you said, well, he didn't make money. That's just British jokes, you see. We, we oh, go along with you and then okay. change, you know, switch. <laughs> all right, I'm so, tracking No, now. Vaughn made no money with, with what we sell it for. So uh, at that price, you know, let's say he gets 10%. We were buying them at, at 99p. So yeah, he's going to get 9p, which is like... Nothing. 12 cents. Yeah. Okay. So, but he, he doesn't care. He's just happy no, that he the, wants this to get book it out. Written, and that's, yeah. that's what our passion was. You know, yeah. these books were sat in a warehouse. They're good stuff. Yeah. Suddenly a thousand copies went in a week when they oh. were trying to sell them off because they couldn't sell yeah. them. And we, especially in the early days, we got a lot of crit of, oh, you're shutting down bookstores and all this. Oh. We are getting books out and there is, there's a challenge. There's a shift of bricks and mortar moving to online. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. I didn't cause that. There's a guy called Jeff who caused that. <laughs> and so we were just pivoting with the purpose of seeking to get as many books out as, as possible, but not just any books, books that the would best point books. people to Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And, and how, uh, like, who are the people that are reaching out to you? Are they pastors? Are they individuals? Yeah. So in the early days, it was pastors who were like buying for a small group or a student group or wanting to... It wasn't happening so much at the time of kind of getting the whole church family reading together because everything was sold at full price. And yeah, so that hard really wasn't possible. Yeah. Suddenly books were being sold at a price where, <coughs> yeah, we could bring in 50 and get the get a whole church reading together. And um, so it was pastors to start with. And then it kind of snowballed. So people would say, well, you've got these three from form, but can you get his other? Now the other then was from a different publisher. Mm. So that then opened the door for me to go to the publisher, a different publisher to say, hey, I've just bought and sold a thousand of, of his titles from, from this publisher. Could I do the same with, with you? And they'd say, well, sure, we could do this discount. And I'd say, well, hang on. I just bought a thousand from another publisher at this discount. 
could you not do something similar? Yeah, a little leverage. And yeah. and it began to snowball. And and then people would say, oh, well, you've now got something from this publisher. It's a different author. Could you, you know, so Michael Reeves, for example, is with, with that publisher. Well, could I get his that? And it began to snowball. And it, people weren't just buying tens. They were buying sort of 50s or hundreds. Yeah. But then other people saying, ah, I only need six. What, you know, what could you do? And that was then the, the start of uh, what is now a, 10 of those.com website where you don't have to buy 10, but the more you buy, the cheaper it gets. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get to the website in a minute. Uh, w did you have any issues with any of the publishers? Did any of them not want to play ball? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was one who um, <clears throat> told us to our face, we're going to do all we can to put you out of business. Wow. Christian publishers. Christian publisher. <laughs> yeah. Ostensibly. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, they, they've gone bust. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. So. <laughs> now, see, in America, we call that irony. Do you get that? Uh, well, yeah, we, we do get it. I, like, this isn't to say, aren't we great? No, yeah. But I asked God you. does yeah. honor, I think, those who honor him. Amen. And that great line from Eric Little of of him, him saying that. And yeah, I, I, I don't think it's any coincidence that they yeah. have struggled financially. They went bust. They were then bought out by a sort of uh, Anglo-Catholic group and they've struggled mm. ever since. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, man, I want to go down yeah. that Anglo-Catholic <laughs> thing, but I'm going to just move on. Uh, so you, you're doing this primarily in the UK, Right. Yeah. So I was a, at first. Yeah. Well, I was a pastor in Northern Ireland, so I started there. Like, and I, I won't make any IRA <laughs> jokes. I got them. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. Too certain. Too certain. <laughs> too certain. Um, uh, so, but then I moved back to the mainland. Uh, so moved back to England, and yeah, just began to snowball. And then there's an organization in the UK called the Proclamation Trust. Wait. I'm sorry. Hold on. You moved back to England. Are you pastoring again at this time? No. I was full time with ten of those. Okay. So you're like, well, this thing's taken off. Mm. Youth group kind of sucks. No, uh, you, no, you didn't say that. No, no, no. But yeah, it was it yeah, was taken yeah, off. Yeah. And so you thought, okay, let's get serious about this. Yeah. And it was it was hard work. So I couldn't afford internet. So I sat in McDonald's car park because they offered free internet. Wow. I would work there for six, eight hours, and then I'd go home, I'd have some food, pack the orders for the night. Yeah. And just do that day after day. It was really, really hard in those early days. When you're selling books at such low cost and- The margins get, are so yeah. thin. Because our model is a bit like a, a budget airline. You know, they can fly so long as all their seats are full. Yeah. And we can do books for a dollar or two or a pound or two, so long as we're selling in, in volume. And in those early days, it was all about just trying to get it out there. So yeah, left youth pastoring, went to do this full time. And then uh, there was an organization called Wesley Owen, which was the equivalent of Lifeway over here, oh. uh, who had, I think, about 50 stores. They were a publisher. They were a distributor, turning over about 32 million pounds, so about, what, $45 million. But they also just were on a massive decline as they moved away from selling stuff that, that held to the Bible. Oh, well, good. Their stores closed and they used to <clears> run <throat> all the big events. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the bookstores for the events and um, the Proclamation Trust, some of you might know um, Dick Lucas. Yeah. And so he, he, uh, he um, uh, founded that. And um, they had a pastor's conference called the EMA, the Evangelical Ministry Assembly be about 11, 1200 pastors at its, at its peak. And they needed a bookstore. Mm -hmm. They invited us to do it. I, I, by the skin of our teeth, we did it mm. and, um, probably didn't do it very well, but that was then sort of the beginning of word getting out. Okay. okay these guys curate what they sell. They believe in what they sell. It's not just seeking to make right. some quick sales yeah. and they're trying to do it in a way that will serve the church. So if somebody couldn't afford it, we'd say, well, just pay what you can afford. We often joke that we'll overcharge the bigger churches and it all balances <laughs> out. But it, it did, the Lord just balanced out yeah. those numbers. And as time's got, gone on, we've been able to give away more. The more we've given, the more sales have come in. And, but that was the start of, of things getting out. And then people would say, oh, well, we've got a smaller conference for a hundred ladies, would you come? Yeah. I was just driving around everywhere. I mean, Facebook gives you these memories of like, uh -huh. 13 years ago, yep. you were doing this. And it, usually it's pretty cringy of like, oh, I can't believe I was doing that or saying that. Forgive me, Lord. But, um, you know, my memories are often saying, oh, I've been away now for three weeks, back for two nights. And go, I was just in the in the car, just loading up books and just taking them wherever I could. Yeah. And so 
so this is all still very local. Yeah. Um, but you have a website. Yeah. When does it, <clears throat> cause you live in the States now. We'll talk yeah. about that. Yeah, but yeah. 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 Walk us from it's, it's primarily UK based. You're barely getting by, you know, eating ramen in your car. Yeah to like, it wasn't that fancy <laughs> <laughs> eating yeah. cold uh, cheeseburgers, but there yes, you go. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so, well, that the EMA kind of helps <laughs> with, with getting events uh, in place. And um, then when that publisher who was the main UK, put, it was IVP um, uh, in the UK, uh, when they said what they said about seeking to put us out of business, yeah, we looked at it and thought, okay, uh, they, they, they absolutely could have done, uh, done that if they'd said, we're going to stop supplying you, but they did, I don't think they had the nerve to do that. Mm. If they did it, they probably could have done that. But anyway, it could have put us out of business. But at that point we thought, okay, we should probably start developing some of our own product so that oh. we can control, um, <clears throat> What, what product's coming in. So there isn't a sort of a blockage of something. And um, so we were looking at things um, that were missing. And it's funny, like I'm, I'm in this job, but I'm dyslexic. So I find reading really hard work oh, man. just to kill it. If I read a book once, I think I'm doing well. If yeah. I read it more than once, it means I forgot I read it in the okay. first place. Right. But um, so I started doing small books uh, so 48 page stuff that we could sell for a pound um, and and get out in a big way. Missionary biography and evangelism, because I saw those three things weren't being done by other publishers. Mm. There weren't short books at low cost. There weren't missionary biographies. The only ones you'd really get were places like Fr Banner Truth did some. There was a group called Authentic Media in the UK who did some, but they were always of, of kind of people from uh, uh, an era before who are dead, which is fine. I get that. But we also needed some contemporary missions biographies. So yeah. we began doing that. And then, and this is still the case in the US, there weren't publishers producing evangelistic material. Mm. So you look in the US uh, for publishers, not one of them has a department that is committed to regularly publishing evangelistic books for non-Christians. Interesting. Not one. Mm. So you have to go to Australia for Matthias Media yeah. or the UK for The Good Book Company or ourselves. Mm. No one in the States is doing it publishing wise. And I've challenged publishers to tithe their publishing and give 10% of their publishing to evangelistic stuff. Nobody's yet done it. But, um, but so the, the so, gauntlet has been dropped though. Yeah, it has. And now they've heard it on this podcast, uh, it, there'll be no stopping them. Yeah. But um, no, they, um, so that, that started our publishing. And I heard a sermon by a guy you might have heard of uh, called Tim Keller, and it was just to change my Christian life. Mm. So I wrote an email. What was to, the sermon? Uh, it was called Blessed uh, Self-Forgetfulness. Oh, sermon. yeah. Oh, you're the one who turned that into the book? Yeah. Wow. So we wrote to Redeemer. It's just like info at Redeemer or whatever and said, yeah. look, this is great. Could we, could we get a wider audience? It took three years, uh, but we were able to publish it. And it's, yeah, it's done. Brother, so I've given away years. so many copies of that yeah. at Sixth Avenue and beyond. Yeah. yeah. I changed my Christian life, that message. I was yeah. in a really dark spot. Uh, I must have listened to it now as audio. Uh, I mean, over a hundred times, yeah. 200 times probably. Yeah. But um, so, and you know, once you've said, oh yeah, we published Tim Keller, it's quite easy then to get, you know, Michael Reeves, Vaughn Roberts. You just you need know, that Mark first Denver, one, right? You yeah, need exactly. people to trust yeah. you. It's like, oh, okay. Tim Keller trusted you. Let's go. Yeah. 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 So we've had the privilege to then work with, <laughs> Alistair Berg and Mark yeah. and others. So, um, so that then elevated. Wait, so you are also, so you're not just a distributor now, you are also a publisher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 10 of those. So publishing. 10 of those is the sort of the, the website. 10 publishing is the publishing arm. Okay. And we, within that we have evangelical press. They, um, have kind of moved into what we're doing and, uh, and Reformation Lightning, which is kids, kids title. So, wow. Yeah. Um, but that then began to branch us out more internationally. So, uh, Singapore, Australia, America, um, trade would start buying our stuff. Uh, so trade, so bookshops. Um, oh, okay. And, um, uh, and so we then began to see, oh, okay. Our stuff is going, uh, going overseas and, it was Crossway and guys at Crossway who were saying, look, you need to bring the the model of your book selling to yeah. the US. Mm. And we were unsure for 
probably three or four years, we've seen people come to the US on a sort of a, a dream mission mm -hmm. of this is going to kind of blow up and it sunk them. So that was one caution. Yeah. The US is well resourced with, yeah. with people and Christians and, and, uh, and money. You kind of had your niche market there in the UK. Yeah. Coming to the US where everything's flooded. Yeah. yeah. And so we were hesitant and <clears throat> I'm a Brit. I was born a Brit, you know, it's like there's a huge mission field in the UK. So where I yeah. grew up in Leeds, yeah. church attendance, not Christian church attendance, and this is anything from sort of Roman Catholic to hyper charismatic, 0.01% attend church. Mm. That is equal to Japan. Yeah. It's post-Christian for real. No doubt. Yeah. And um, so why go to the States? And I think some of my family and friends feel, you know, why are you there? But our burden is to see the whole church family reading good stuff. So not just the ministers, because I think ministers are, you know, there's plenty of places ministers yeah. can get books. Yeah, right. But the whole church family, they, the dyslexic young Christian like I was, how, uh -huh. how are they going to start reading? Yeah. And we want to help with that. But there are millions of millions of people who are going to hell who don't know about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe a book that points them to him might just change their life. Yeah. Well, that I'd love to be involved in helping mobilize churches think evangelistically with literature. And America has churches. It doesn't really have evangelistic literature. Amen. So if yeah. we can bring that, plus a, a means of getting it out to say, look, it's a dollar, it's a dollar fifty. Blow this up, get your whole town a book and and visit them, distribute yeah. it. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. And that's why we came. That was our big passion. And one slight byproduct uh, is that without really realizing it, Americans are subsidizing missions overseas Praise God. by the prices that they're willing to pay here. Uh -huh. So a quick story, if I, if I may. So in France, there's, there's an agreement where a publisher publishes a book and sets a retail price. Everybody must sell it at that price. So let's take uh, John Stott, The Cross of Christ. Let's say that's published in, in French and the retailer sets a, a retail price of 40 euros. Okay. Everyone has to sell it at 40 euros. It's, it's law? Yeah. Okay. And it's self-fulfilling because there aren't many Christians in, in France. So you, you print 500. 500 costs a lot. Price goes up. Price is high. Not many people are going to afford it, going to buy it. Sales aren't great. So what we're wanting to do and beginning to do it, we've done it with now two books, is take funds from uh, the US business and pay for French books to be translated and published, but with a retail price of a euro or two. Wow. And then everybody has to sell it for a euro or two. Yeah. And now it's that price. You sell 3,000, 4,000. And because you sell three or 4,000, you can print it for... 50 cents cheaper, or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, so that's what we're seeking to do as a byproduct. Uh, Americans are funding mission without perhaps even realizing it. Oh, praise God. That's amazing. Um, <clears throat> and how has business gone since you've gotten to the U.S.? <laughs> so we arrived in the U.S. the August before COVID. Right. <laughs> and we're trying to do a startup, get the word out, do events, travel travel the U.S., which is... Where are you guys located, by the way? I'm in Chicago. Our warehouse is in um, Louisville. So okay. it's just down the road from here where we're yeah. recording. But um, uh, just trying to get the word out, going around to events. Um, and um, similar stories to the U U.K., though, because where Wes Lewin was, was on the decline in closing stores... That's what happened with Cura, uh, sorry, with um, Lifeway, mm -hmm. who were providing TGC, Getty Singh, T4G, mm -hmm. Cross. Mm -hmm. And so they withdrew and we were able to hire a guy from, from uh, Lifeway who knew uh, Matt Schmucker and others uh, and was trusted. And so we were then approached, hey, would you step in and do these, these bookstores? Yeah. Which was just unbelievable you know our yeah. intention was never to replace uh, what what uh, lifeway were doing but they were removed from the game and the lord provided this, yeah. this opening so you're thinking it's happening yeah 
And then COVID. And COVID. Well, yeah, and my visa was revoked before that, which is another story. But oh. uh, if ever you've seen The Great Escape, it was a bit like that. <laughs> the TSA agents could could work for the... I'll be careful because I'm reapplying for my visa. Yeah. The TSA agents are lovely, but one oh, people wow. so generous. And, yeah. yeah, and the Biden administration, <laughs> unbelievable the work I'll make doing. no comment. But anyway, <laughs> we, our visa was revoked. We had to go back for, for, for nine months. When we came back, our house had nine flooded months. and had black mold. It was, oh. it was like, you know, I did... There was times where I said, Lord, am I Jonah here? And I'm running away and I shouldn't be here. And yeah, Lord, right. Kind of throw me overboard. Um, but each step along the way, there was also things happening that, Lord, I'm not sure what you're saying because the visa is revoked, but we've just got the contract to do T4G. Yeah. Like, which is it? What Do you want us to prosper or do you yeah, want us to be right. back when... And just, ah, oh, it's just been amazing how things have happened. But then COVID hit and it's like, ah, oh, um, what are we going to do? T4G is not going to happen. They then switched to to move online mm -hmm. at, so long as um, they could keep the registration, but then they'd send out the free books. Yeah, Everyone said yes, pretty much everyone. T4G then said, would you guys send out the books on, on our behalf? Well, that kept us going. It kept the lights yeah. on for another couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. And then they did an online bookstore for the online T4G. Yeah. And um, I don't think you mind me saying this, but uh, there's a kind of clause in the contract that we gave a percentage of the money from web sales to um, to T4G, but it was it was tiny compared to what we do as a physical thing because you know people buy at the physical store rather than online at those things. But then. Everywhere went online. Well, financially, oh. that that kept us going. Wow. But then T4G say they're going to stop, and so just it, it felt like two yeah. steps forward, maybe two back, two back, three yeah. back. I don't yeah. know, but yeah. But God has just been unbelievably kind. And our, in our visa application to start with, we had to give a five year plan with uh, our, our figures for for the five years. We've just hit the fifth year with $500, within $500 of what we said. Wow. And, you know, you put your numbers on it, you, you pick the numbers for the visa application, you think, you know, oh, I hope we do it. This is kind of, and God's just provided. It's been unreal. Yeah. yeah. Well, there are at least dozens of people who are going to watch this interview <laughs> and go on 10 of those. And they might not have further. got this far with me though. They might have switched <laughs> off 10 minutes ago. No, nah, this is a blast. Yeah. Maybe they haven't understood everything you've been saying. But. <laughs> we'll write it down and mail it to you. So you yes. <laughs> so you guys uh, do CrossCon. Yep. And what, what other conferences are you working? So um, the Gospel Coalition, we do their all, all their conferences, regional and national yeah. women's, um, the Getty conferences and their tours, Acts 29, um, Missio Nexus. Um, we do, uh, I think this last year we did 107 um, conferences in the oh US. Goodness. Do you have to and be at all of those? Not me personally, but yeah. you got to be at the biggest ones, though, right? <laughs> yeah, where there's a podcast to come to, I'll, hey, I'll come man, there, yeah. brother. Um, and so in the UK, we do about 300 uh, a year. Oh. Now, this is anything from because we do big conferences like this, but. 300 people or more in the US or 100 people or more in the UK because you can get around easier. But it's also church services. So we'll go on a Sunday morning. We'll provide a pop-up bookstore. We'll make some recommendations, not in a sort of secondhand car sales commercial way, but yeah. just in a, we passionately believe in the quality of these books. Yeah. They're, in, they're in the lobby area. They're all discounted. If you can't afford it, Take it as so long as you promise to read it, and we do a lot of those. So Sunday, Sunday based Sunday, we're we're out um, doing those. Um, but women's retreats, men's conferences, pillar network, you know, all sorts. Of Whatever places. you're showing up, or somebody from ten of those is showing up and yeah. doing things. So we're growing a team and uh, and, and building, and uh, yeah. So in in the foyer that used to be our building at Sixth Avenue, we had a church fire on Monday. Oh uh, wow! Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> a we, church on fire. I won't make the joke, but go yeah, on. right. But it writes itself. Yep. Um, you know, actually, hold off on that. Mm. Uh, I've been. We had a we had a, a a pretty significant prayer service the weekend before prayer of lament. Mm. Um, I think it was really powerful mm. and there's a lot of different ways you could look at a church fire. Maybe the Lord is disciplining us, whatever. But uh, one of the things I've been thinking about is spiritual warfare. Mm. And have anyway, so have you, have you interpreted all those things that was happening? Uh, all those things that were happening to, to you guys as like 
Satan does not want this to happen because everything you're describing to me sounds like something Satan would not want to happen. It seems really incredible, really powerful, really useful. Have you thought about that angle? Um, I have. Uh, I what I want to hold very loosely is the work we do. It is it's the Lord's work. It's mm. for His glory. He has given me an opportunity to serve in this way of which I am deeply, deeply grateful. And that may end one day. Mm -hmm. it, it may carry on without me. It may just stop it, you know. And so I want to hold what we're doing lightly, but we take what we're doing very seriously, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. It does. Um, we want to see people fall in love with Jesus. If they have never done that, we're desperate that people would would come to know him. If they know him, we want them to, to grow in their love for him. So that is a serious business. I don't want to mess about with that. Well, I, you know, I'm fallible. Our team get things wrong. All our authors, uh, they, they're fallible too. But we do want to be as close as we can holding to scripture. And that is a serious business. We can be killing people with what we're putting out. Yeah. Spiritually speaking. Yeah, eternally. So it's so it's it's serious. Because it's serious, the devil will want to to lie and distract and uh and destroy what we're doing. Not because mm -hmm. we're significant, no. but the message <clears throat> is is significant. Yeah. Um and so, yeah, I take the take the black mold in the in the house. I don't think the Lord wanted that to happen, mm -hmm. but I know the Lord uses those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I had a privilege in Northern Ireland of being mentored by uh, Dr. Helen Rosevear, who uh, is medical missionary to, to the Congo, has written many books, and was one of the speakers way back when at a banner and other places. And her. Her line on suffering, and she suffered greatly. Let's see if I can remember. I'm tired, but um, can you thank God for trusting you with the suffering that you're walking through, even if he never tells you why it's happening? Mm -hmm. So you're not thanking God for the suffering, but can you thank God for trusting you with it, even if he never tells you why? So when the black mold were... Okay, I've got to remember Helen, right? Lord, you've, you're trusting me with this suffering. I'm going to be thankful in the midst of it. I have no idea why you're doing it. And I, I to this day, I have no idea why that. Mm -hmm. We did move. We moved house uh, as a result. We didn't trust the landlord. He said, oh, we'll just paint over it. It'll be fine. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not so sure. <laughs> We've been able to uh. witness to, to our neighbors on, on the other side. I don't think they've trusted Christ yet. Maybe they will. Maybe they will and will have gone to glory. Mm -hmm. And that will have happened because the devil brought black mold to our house. Yeah. And what he intended for evil, God has used for good. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe this fire is, well, that's great. That's that's getting you ready to expand your area or change. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what the devil uses, he, he is seeking to destroy and, and God uses it for good and... Even if you never know why, oh, yeah. he's trusting you with it. And I think that is an amazing privilege. Yeah. Amen, brother. So you work with a lot of publishers. Yeah. Let's play a little game. You tell me who you think is heretical. No, I'm just kidding. Let's, <laughs> uh, let's do a word association game. I'll okay. say the name of the publisher. You say one word that comes to mind when I say the name of the pu publisher. Uh, okay. Now, let me just uh, what? brief what? this. I got to hang on before, before. We just need some rules of engagement okay. here. Because... There's probably two levels. There's, there might be a flippant answer with some truth in it, and there may also be some. So I might give you two words for some. That's of fine. That. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we'll edit out the <laughs> part that makes it more. <laughs> that makes it better. The PR guys in our company are You're going. Right. Ah. No. You don't have to worry. Like ten people are going to yeah. watch this. Yeah. So but they're, they'll go. all be from the publishers. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, okay. Um, Christian focus. Um, I, you are right. So. Um, uh, uh, that's a lot of words. Lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say at the start, okay, we work with all of these very closely. That We class them as partners. Okay. Um, and so they all have they all have strengths. They all have weaknesses as as we do as well. And let me just yes. say that. I'm yes, sure yes. there's things that they would say about us. Uh, and so, uh, 
Yeah. Okay. So Christian Focus, um, they do some great kids uh, kids books. They do one, Helen Rose of it. Oh, one, one word. word. Scottish. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, that does some. Anyway, never mind. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Scottish. Uh, and I'm guessing that's an insult to people who live in the UK. Well, it, it take it be. how you wish. No, it can be positive. Okay. As well. All right. Uh, they publish Helen Rose of it, so I love them for that. Oh, well, there so, you go. There you go. Um, the Good Book Company. Uh, <laughs> can I say British? Uh, now, um, uh, Christian's Explored. They publish it. Okay. Is that, that's uh, this isn't what you wanted, is it? I'm going to be careful. Let's what? see where this goes. Uh, they have a very uh, good book company. Can I, I'll do a few more. I'll give okay, you a sentence. Okay, yeah, Let's okay, do okay. a sentence. Let's do it. They publish some really good stuff that I really love. They have a different business model to, to what we do. And in the UK, that can be challenging because we're a small area. We sell things uh, very low cost on mass. Yeah. They have a different business model to us. Totally fine. Yeah. Um, there's my sentence. Okay. Do you want to go back and add a sentence to Christian focus? Yes. Um, uh, they do some brilliant kids stuff and some great mission stuff. I wish they were better at design. Okay. That's interesting. So my, my book on the prosperity gospel came out with them. Me and Mike McKinley wrote a book with them. I wasn't super in love with the design of the cover. Uh, my next book, uh, glad we got back to me, by the way, Jeez, man, <laughs> it was right? enough of you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> definitely. Enough, <laughs> it's coming out in March and I was pleasantly surprised. I was pleasantly. I noticed that earlier. Yeah. I didn't know if you had as well. It bit me. You so let's it. see if superpowers developed. Yeah. Sorry for our listeners. There was a spider on the table. Uh, my second bush, uh, book is coming out with them and they hired a new whatever uh graphic designer yeah fantastic yeah and yeah. i do like to they're patient with me because i badger them on design i'm glad somebody did yeah, yeah. And, and um it's like yeah they, they're also not so much with the marketing no they're lovely to work with they're good people yeah um and uh their heart their heart is in the right place i've got time for them i respect them yeah um, yeah. yeah good um I, i've certainly enjoyed working with colin fast he's been a real yeah. pleasure yeah yeah, yeah he's I've, a good brother. i've only met him a couple of times but yeah. yeah now he's, he's the opposite of you he's a, a yeah. an american guy who moved to the uk see that's what that's why i think it's okay for me to come over here so one in one out we could just yeah just yeah. Yeah. yeah uh ivp uh us or uk yes both. Uh, do both. both. Uh, well, UK, um, fantastic heritage. They published some really excellent stuff. The the old BSTs, Alec Matera um, was series editor for the Old Testament. John Stott for the New Testament. They do John Stott stuff, new Bible commentary. They've got some fantastic stuff in their backlist. Right. IVP US, um, they've got some good stuff, but I wouldn't trust them. Yeah. Um, because they've got some stuff they shouldn't publish. Yeah. And that is worse, actually. I'd rather, if you're going to publish stuff that is um, kind of drifting away from the Bible, yeah. just do that. When yeah. you do a bit of both, it's yeah. really confusing because people think they can trust you and they're deceived. Okay, let's pause and let's, 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 let me take that and run with it. When I was a brand new Christian... Uh, I had, I was, I was deep in the prosperity gospel. Um, when I was coming out of the prosperity gospel, I saw a John Piper sermon that was kind of the beginning of the end. And so I, you know, bought a John Piper book and he quotes R.C. Sproul and then I buy an R.C. Sproul book. So then uh, my, my wife and I would go to bookstores, use bookstores. And the way that we would look for books is by name. Mm. And by publisher, mm -hmm. right? You start to learn like, oh, these are the publishers. You know, you see a Crossway book. You're like, oh, it's two bucks. It's from Crossway. I'm going to buy it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, let's say some of our readers are doing that. Who are some publishers that you say, I just don't know if we could, if you should trust yeah. them. And I guess this would be asking you, like, who yeah. do you not work with? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's a really, really important question. Um and I will answer it. What I will say to start with, though, is what I said a few minutes ago of, we are all fallible. So we must remember that. Whoever, you, Dr. Helen Roosevelt, just treasure her deeply. She was a sinner who needed to be saved. Mm -hmm. And that is true for all of these publishing houses. They are run by sinners mm -hmm. who get things wrong. And the moment we elevate people to, oh, I just love everything they do, that's right. really dangerous. Right. So I just Crossway is not batting a thousand. 
They're great. Yeah. But even they make mistakes. They, get, they, get, they okay. make mistakes because yeah. they need a savior too, That's as, right. as I do. So let's remember that. Um, there, there are some publishers that we work with because they've got some good stuff there, and that's yeah. what's difficult. So, But the ones where I have a warning light, so Zonovan, Thomas Nelson, um, you know, they are owned by Rupert Murdoch. So he is oh, not no. passionately bothered about your spiritual health. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so yeah. you, you've got to watch that, though. There's good people in them, and they publish some great stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, they Usually the, it's like divisions within those big publishing houses, right? Yeah. If you get the right person working this division, yeah. it'll be good. That's yeah. right. Um, and that, so like D.A. Carson, Sally Lloyd-Jones with Zondervan, but they also just publish some, you know, Rob Bell. Also with it. so you mm -hmm. you gotta watch so uh, I you gotta watch IVP I'm afraid uh, US um, and now UK um, uh, I I worry about authentic media they're not massively over here but they do some stuff with chosen and passion translation yeah um, uh, who else I mean put it a different way who are okay. people that we trust that we work yeah with closely? let's do that it doesn't mean that they get everything right but yeah Crossway are up there Banner of Truth. I think Baker do a lot of good stuff. There's some um, uh, divisions that- are, Like are Baker weaker. Academic does some wonky yeah, stuff. Yeah, they do, and Revel, they do some stuff, but there's some also really good stuff in there. Um, New Growth Press, Good Book Company, Christian Focus, um, uh, p &R. You know, so the, these are, and I'll have missed some out, but um, yeah. uh, they, they are, they're publishers that we work with very, very closely. Yeah. It doesn't mean we take everything that they sell. Sure. But that also doesn't mean that if we don't sell it, it's no good. It just means we're seeking to curate a range that that, that is is trustworthy. So, uh, yeah. Amber, can you see if my book is on the ten of those websites? Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I'm serious. Have, I want to know. Have, have, have he doesn't it? know. He doesn't know. I bet you he wouldn't yeah, know. Let's I'm, find out. Yeah. I wrote a book on the prosperity gospel that is meant. Yeah. It's designed right up your alley. It's meant to be a book that that you can give to someone who is actually in the prosperity gospel yeah. and it won't be such a punch in the face on the first page yeah. that maybe they'll read it all the and way was through. Was it CFP? Huh? Was it CFP, Christian Focus? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we do. I, let's see. I, I'm, I, don't, listen, I don't know. Hey, listen, I'm test. willing to get awkward. If not, we'll get. We'll, yeah. yeah okay. Send us a sample copy. That's the other thing you see. If It's on there. Oh, look, let's yes! go. Okay. Come on. It's discounted. It's discounted from $12.99 to $11. Wowie, wow. not that. much of a and, discount. Well, $1 shipping. Yeah. Poof, Ooh, even to you the Californians. Can't beat that. Yeah, I know. So. Look at it, God. You. Okay. We can go another hour. <laughs> and then you do the nine, you do the nine mark church questions booklets, uh, right? Are they uh, on that site? No, so oh, like we sell them. Yeah, Crossway yeah. publish them. Yeah, but yeah, we, right. yeah, we sell. Oh, yeah, we sell them. Yeah, okay. We, yeah. I think I bought I bought like a maybe a hundred and fifty of those. You know, the different ones yeah. with the little cardboard box oh, cutout yeah, yeah, thing. Sounds, yeah. That's what I was going over earlier. Yeah. It was set up in our foyer. Yeah, and I, I got them from you guys because okay. it was it was just the best deal yeah. in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. That's really helpful. And and just to be clear, uh, you know, I'm, I wasn't asking you that because like, oh, sweet, you know, we'll clip this and we'll see, you know, yeah. 10 of those guys. Know. It really, I really am thinking about yeah. the young Christian who just doesn't know what to read. And they, that's, that's the way they do it. They well, go Well, can like, I give some advice on that then? Please because do. Because I think it's often not by publisher um, because m many kind of are doing a whole range of stuff. Ask a trusted Christian. Yes, Get to know yes. an older Christian and say, all right, what have you Like read? your pastor. Your pastor, yeah. yeah, a mentor, who's leading your small group, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Somebody you trust. Um, usually don't trust the commendations that are on the back. It either means that they're, they're a mate, they haven't necessarily read it, and you can usually see through it. So just be wise with your commendations, but also see who is recommending it as well. Of which places, where yeah. you know, which conference have you seen it at? Mm -hmm. So something like a, a, a cross conference, every title is gone through very carefully. That's right. Do we want to be selling this, etc. So uh, go go carefully. Um, look for look for authors that you you know and trust don't just read them but you know that's going to be a safe place but then see who they quote you that's know right. they they reference in a positive light okay oh so so and so is talking about yeah. something. well i'll check them out um when it comes to reading particularly as a dyslexic where, where i have to read a lot of books i have to get into a lot very quickly once you've got into a book and you think okay i know what this is saying now don't feel you have to finish it. There may be great wisdom and in finishing it because it's going to keep speaking to you. Often books are too long by chapter seven. You know what they're saying. That you is can true. move on. Yeah. Feel free to do that. Equally, if you're reading a book and you think, 
this isn't right. Stop. You know, <laughs> yeah. move on. Life yeah. is too short Amen. and your diet too important to eat junk food. So don't. Um, and, um, uh, uh, yeah, what, what it's, um, don't, don't eat junk food. Yeah. And can't remember what I was going to say next, but in just be careful. Yeah, it be is careful. your diet and what goes in is what's going to come out. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. The other thing like, it is important as you grow as a Christian to not just kind of read from your safe, okay, this is my tribe, I'm gonna read from my tribe. Sure. It, it can be good to critically read those that perhaps have a different viewpoint mm -hmm. um, or maybe aren't speaking truth so that you know how to speak truth into mm -hmm. that. Um, but be careful because the devil will love to sort of twist yeah. and, uh, and spoil. Uh, An example of that, uh, there's a guy named Hartman Rosa. He's a critical theorist from Germany. Uh, I'm the anti-critical theory guy, but he wrote this book on the uncontrollability of the world and it was fantastic. And towards the end, he really tips his hand to his Marxist worldview, mm. Freudian, Marxist, all that. And uh, it was funny, the more he did that, the more he just like solidified my confidence in the gospel. Cause I agreed with all the arguments he was making. And then when he showed me the foundation for those arguments, I saw how utterly inconsistent they were. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, if he would just read Genesis one, you yeah. know, but you have to be careful. Uh, you have to make sure that you're ready for that, that you've, you've sharpened your skills Seriously. of discernment, that you, you've been well discipled. You're in a healthy church community. Uh, so yeah, make sure and you're ready for that. Accountability with that of, yeah. you know, talk to somebody what, about what you're reading, whether it's good or bad, yeah. they're going to help you. They're going to be kind of uh, stabilizers as well and Amen. it will sharpen them, but they'll sharpen you. I'm going to butcher this quote, but I'll paraphrase it so it doesn't look so brutal, okay. but it's something along the lines of, you know, the books that you uh, have read are important because they have shaped you. That's right. The books you buy are perhaps even more important because they are going to be determining the person you want to be. Mm. So as you as you look back at your shelf, they will have shaped you. But what is now going to shape you in the books that uh, 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 that you buy? Uh, so choose wisely. Choose wisely because they they will shape you. But and again to butcher sort of Spurgeon, but you know live in many books. But so, no, so visit read, many books. Read, but, live, but live in the in Bible. The, that's right, yeah, that's yeah. right. And and that. Again, is a challenge for me of, okay, I've got these six books that have just arrived to, to read, to review, to kind of, but have I met, have I met God in his words? Yeah. Um, because that is the only one that is infallible. Guaranteed to give life. That's right, brother. Uh, everyone's fallible. Uh, we all make mistakes. What mistakes have you made? What book have you included that you wish you wouldn't have? Um, book, books. Yeah. Um, well, we have to take quite a number off each year um, for guys that have fallen away. Oh. Um, we sold Mark Driscoll's stuff uh, at the start. And to be fair, before uh, all of that happened, uh, a trusted minister took me to one side and said, I just think you need to be careful. Um, and I perhaps take this off. And it was one particular one. Yeah. Uh, we didn't for about eight months and we took it off uh, down the line. Uh, as we just did a bit more work and yeah, uh, so there's that. But, but he's back now, so you can put him back on the list. Um, so there's, there's there's been mistakes the other way of like we've been too cautious. Okay, like actually we've probably just been judgmental. Okay, actually because yeah. their vocabulary is different, though their theology is the same. Can you give me an example? Um. I was wary of Andrew Wilson to start with. Because mm -hmm. he's, uh, he, he's complementarian with kind of quotation marks around mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um, but actually, that was a judgmental thing on my part. Yeah. And somebody gave me a book of his. I've read it four times now. It, it's had four such, times. Yeah. Wow. So it's called Incomparable. He goes through 60 characteristics of God, yeah. each one's four pages long. As He's a fantastic happens, writer. We then bought the rights for it mm. from another publisher because it was so good yeah. and brought the price down to get it out. So that that's on me. I was judgmental. I, I yeah. got that wrong. And um, uh, Well, he yeah. should probably just ha stop having women preach in his church and that would help a lot. <laughs> I'll let you raise that with him. But, okay. um, so yeah, we get it wrong both, both ways yeah. uh, in that sense. We, I'd rather be more cautious though. Yeah. I don't think... I. 
I can't recall one that we've taken off because, oh, yeah, we shouldn't have have taken uh, put put that on. Less so to do with the content, more to do with the authors. Lifestyle, yeah, yeah. Um, which is a difficult one. I mean, I said no to one recently because the guy's lifestyle on Twitter is just mm. not becoming of a of a Christian author, I don't yeah. think. And and do you think that book would have sold well? You would have made money off of it? Uh, oh yeah. I mean, there's plenty of those that would have done. So this guy, when we first started, um, there was a guy called Steve Chalk in the UK okay. uh, who wrote The Lost Message of Jesus, which was a denial of penal substitutionary atonement, yeah. uh, which then N.T. Wright endorsed. Um, oh, come then, on, N.T. Wright. Every time I try to root for you, buddy, you go and do another dumb thing. So if you know the book, um, Pierce for Our Transgressions, which uh, Mike Fantastic. Ovi, so that book was written in response to yeah. um, Steve Chalk. Oh. Well, uh, I think it's called It Is Well now, right? No, I'm thinking of the Michael Lawrence, Mark yeah, Dever book. No, Sorry, yeah. um, Pierce for Our Transgressions, I think it's Crossway in the U.S. It's IVP UK in the, in the U.K. Okay. Uh, we'd have made tens of thousands from Steve yeah. Chalk. And that was a book that everybody wanted and we were just starting out. Hey, and chalk it up as a loss. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look at that. Right? I think people will have laughed at that. <laughs> <laughs> I think so we, too, we dude. did at least. So, yeah. yeah, but I, I, we, we have this phrase, we are in business to do ministry. Amen. The purpose must be the ministry. Yeah. But we do have to make the business work, otherwise there won't be a ministry that's, yeah. that's being paid for. So we have to balance those two things out. We have to make some, some business choices there of... Um, yeah, this book was okay, um, sound, and it's popular. It's not one that has, has stirred my heart. I'm passionately yeah. behind it in that sense. But then equally, that's fine because not all books are written just for me and my sort of sure. type. So, um, so but how, do, make, you, how yeah. do you sort through them all? I mean, I'm sure these days you're bombarded. You can't read every book that comes to the we door. We are sent 500 new books every month Wow. Uh, to add on. And that doesn't hey, include self Hey, speaking of which, I have a book I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> it can be 499. Uh, so there's a team that work on it. We, okay. we use reviewers. So, um, you know, people like, say, like a Tim Challey, you know, if he's saying this is the best book I've read this year, we're yeah. going to sit up and listen. Yeah. Um, but also, local pastors, we get to know. So, like my, my pastor at church, I know that he's a he's a big reader. Which pastor? Uh, Which called church? Eric Channing. He's Hope Fellowship in uh, in Lombard. In, Shout out to Eric. Yeah, there right. he is. And um, you know, if he says, "Oh, this book is just dynamite," you should Boom, get it. Added. Well, great because yeah. he's a trusty guy. And yeah. but again. Let's be careful. He gets things wrong just as mm -hmm, I do. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, if he if he's saying it's from such and such a publisher, I'm thinking, really? They're doing good stuff now. You know, I'll perhaps say, well, look, I'll get a review copy. I'll take a look and yeah. kind of. And it, it's not always about sound or unsound. There are plenty of sound books that are just dull and oh, deadly. Oh, brother, you are not lying. I don't want to be selling those because they're going to put somebody off reading something that's great and 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 well written and got a good cover and these sorts of things. So we pick on content, we pick on accessibility and we pick on price. So content is king. Does it hold to the Bible? Mm -hmm. But accessibility, that's everything from, does it have a cover that looks like it's been designed by a 12 year old in a school yeah. project? Um, or, um, Accessibility. Is it 60,000 words and it really should have been 12? Yeah. Because that's not going to help. Um, is it, um, is it like sometimes it's just a terrible font? You know, oh, uh, yeah. I mean, Banner of oh, Truth. Banner, Banner, <laughs> get out of my head. Improving, but, um, and has anybody talked to them about that? Has anybody been like, hey, it's it's old words, but you don't have to use an old font. <laughs> know. You know, like. Uh, they're getting there. They, I good. think they're getting there. So Valley of Vision is now readable. Uh, oh, but, wow. uh, and then And then price. So if there's two books on the same topic that are equal in terms of content and accessibility, and one's $20 and one's $10, I'm always going to go for the $10 one because okay. you can sell twice as many. Uh, and I want to yeah. get as many seeds out as possible so that some might fall on good soil. What's been, give me the top five, and maybe you don't have this data in your head, but more or less, yeah. top five books that you guys have distributed. Um, well, Gospels, we do millions of Gospels. Uh, what, sorry, what do you mean by that? Like John's Gospel, Mark's yeah. Gospel. Oh, so, so you just have individual yeah. copies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sell so them. Just sell, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Freedom of Self-Forgetfulness uh, is up there. So Classic. that's 700,000 units of that. Um, there's a book called Gorilla Christian. Sorry, did you say several or seven? 700,000. Nice. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, yeah, have you understood anything I've said so far? Uh, I've been, been pretty spotty. It's him down. pretty spotty. <laughs> okay. yeah. um, there's a book called Grill a Christian. It's not a cookbook. It is, um, <laughs> it's 65 questions about God and the Bible that a skeptic often asks. Mm. And um, so we're here at Cross Conference. We're selling them for a dollar. We just, to get that out in a big way, and I, I'm not sure quite of the numbers, but it's it's hundreds of thousands. But um, wow. um uh, what other stuff goes well? I mean, Paul Tripp, New Morning Mercies, just obviously. Paul Tripp, that guy can't miss. Speaking of books that are too long, yes. Which one? Every book he's ever written. <laughs> yeah, and he can't miss. I think his last couple haven't been great. But anyway, <laughs> uh, New Morning Mercies is, is really good. Yeah. Um, oh, do you want an exclusive? Yeah. So, uh, an author I love, and not just because he was British, um, but J.C. Ryle. Oh, just unbelievable. Simplicity in preaching, thoughts for young men. Yeah. Yeah. Holiness. What I think he does in a way that very, very few people are able to do, deep theology for the average person. So true. And I am bang average. So what he is able <laughs> to, to communicate. Yeah. Um, so his daily readings through all four gospels is yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Okay. So here's the exclusive. Banner of Truth do a lovely edition of his seven volume expository thoughts. Okay. I have used it so often in my in my quiet times or just, you know, reading through the gospels. So, so good. Um, we are publishing a slightly modernized English edition. Um, so it's not in, in the AV and these sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, of those seven volumes, it will still be um, cloth bound, ribbon marker. We're going to put it in a box set. It will come out in the late summer uh, of 2024. And particularly for um, students, college students, et cetera, those people in, in low, uh, low income areas, they'll be able to get it for $50 for the entire Whoa. set of, of seven volumes. I think it retails banner at like 189. Wow. It will have a retail of about 139, but you'll see it basically everywhere for $99 or less. Cause I'm passionate that that set is on everybody's shelf, not just on their shelf, but digested over mm. the course of their mm -hmm. lifetime. Because what Ryle does in those seven volumes is absolutely outstanding. And so watch this space in the summer. Okay, so about yeah, I'm 50, excited. $60, that, that's what they'll get. And while we're talking about Ryle, I want to commend Ian Hamilton's, not Ian Hamilton. Uh, uh, Ian Murray. Ian Murray's yeah. uh, biography, biography, Prepared to Stand Alone. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Um, Ryle's Thoughts for Young Men. Oh. Any gent should be reading that. Uh, and by gent, you mean? Bloke. Uh, and by bloke, you mean? <laughs> man. Man. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we bought like 15 copies, gave them to anyone under the age yeah. of 40. But even then, older guys yeah. should read it, find another younger yeah. guy. Simplicity in Preaching is a book that, mm. I mean, it'll take you an hour, if that. Yeah. Maybe if you're dyslexic too. Yeah. But we <laughs> weeks. <laughs> we <laughs> but like... Yeah. Every preacher I know can simplify his preaching. Yeah. 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 And uh, man, yeah, sorry. And we're we'll about to go on a whole J.C. Ryle. Yeah, thing. well, oh, one more on J.C. Okay. Ryle. If, if you haven't spent time talking with the Lord today, read Do You Pray. Oh, it's, I've not I heard think, it. 56 pages. Yeah. Like, it, it, it is, it's convicting in that it will punch you in the face. Yeah but with an arm around you at the same time. Mm, that's and the best, I yeah. love that. Is it upstairs at the bookstore? Yeah. Nice. It's on the $3 go dollar table. Copy. Okay. I don't know how we do it. Uh, I went to go buy a copy of Holiness recently on Amazon. Boo, Ooh. boo. I uh, just th This is a Christian podcast, is it? <laughs> What's your <Yeah>. language? <laughs> right. I'm feeding the beast. I often say about Amazon, we we put our profits on the mission field rather than sending our owner to space. So that's, Amen, uh, that's brother. Uh, well, the the problem is is like, okay, so I want to go order from uh, insert name of Jeff's Christian. Place. Yeah, 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 some yeah. place. No, no, no. Uh, oh, another place. No, oh, like okay. a Christian bookstore. Okay. And it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare to place the order. And listen, at the end of the day, I don't want to feed the beast, but I also yep. don't have like 20 extra minutes to figure out. Totally. I don't want to, I don't want you to bombard me on your email list. Yeah. I can just go to Amazon one click. Anyways, yeah. I should probably still not do that. I get that. They are convenient and they've been good for that. I get yeah. that. Um, when you say convenient, I noticed you put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. Mm. When we used to own you, you used to talk properly. <laughs> uh, when we I let know. you go. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, here's what we do in America, okay? Let me give you a little education. 
We take whatever is British and we make it better. Let me lay out my case. Mm, we right? call that butchering it, but never mind. No, no. <laughs> so you guys have crumpets, right? Yeah. We turn them into biscuits, right? You ever had biscuits and gravy, sausage, huh? Yeah, right? You put grits with it. And that yeah. is, I mean, we have concrete. Yeah. You have grits. Grits. <laughs> no. Same we, we take We take the Magna Carta, right? Yeah. Boom. U.S. Constitution. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. We take whatever you, I guess, call the English language. Yeah. Boom. We were talking about holiness. When oh, yeah. Okay. We get okay. that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, holiness has a little bit fallen on, time, on, on hard times recently because of uh, what I think is a streak of antinomianism mm -hmm. in, in the U.S. church. Mm. Uh, but you, do you know Mike McKinley? Mm. Well, I... I know who he is. Yeah. yeah okay. I, I was, he, he loves holiness, leads yeah. guides through it. There was He's a, a customer of ours. There yeah, you go. He's yeah, church yeah, by from us. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, Shout anyways, we were talking about a, a friend of ours. Uh, we, he had been a member of both of our churches okay. and he was not a fan. And Mike just goes, listen, if you have a problem with JC Ryle's holiness, mm. that's your problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I couldn't find a, a good copy of it. I ordered three copies and they all came in like the book was like this big and oh, it was wow. all like, it must've been like cheaply made in China or yeah. something. Yeah. And so I went back and I scrolled and I scrolled and I scrolled and I could not find like a good modern clean rendition. So it was that me. Am I, in, am I the idiot? That is you because <laughs> okay. upstairs at cross, we were doing um, holiness in modern English for $2 Dang. Um, and they've all, it, they okay. have all gone. That, it's just a little side on this for a student conference uh, for 18s to 25s. Yeah. To sell out of a book on holiness oh, is unreal. And when we say sold out, I think we yeah. brought 3000 copies. Wow. So, um, I'll, I'll send you a copy. Thanks, All brother. Right, there you go. What is the number one selling book at CrossCon? Um, I think it may well be that or Pilgrim's Progress. So oh, uh, praise I, God. Yeah. So over uh, at the cross conference, we've got these $2 value tables. Yeah. So don't waste your life. Don't Donald waste your Whitney. life. Yeah. Um, praying through. Yeah. Scripture, um, uh, what is the gospel? Greg Gilbert. Yeah. I mean, all of those have been huge sellers. Uh, Rosario Butterfield's uh, new one, uh, mm -hmm. Five Lives, uh, Five Lies. Um, um, we've sold a ton of Bibles. You'd think people would have Bibles. By That's now, what I was just thinking. And like Bible apps on your phone yeah, and... Uh, Totally. Um, now you have initiative, sorry, you have an mm. initiative where you have a $5 ESV study Bible, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. then if they, if someone while at this conference mm. buys it, you send another one. No. So if they sort of, but if they okay. buy it for $5, we will get it to India. For, wow. For $5. Yeah, for $5. Yeah. So we work with a, a group in India and um, uh, who, you know, India is not an easy place at the no, moment um, no. for Christians. And um, yeah, praise God. I, I looked just before we came on and we'd done about 2,000 Bibles. Wow. Um, and we've got somebody who's doing a, a match funding. So I, I think it will get to five. Uh, wow, praise 5, God. 000, and, yeah. But you're sending English Bibles, I'm guessing, because English That's is That's what they requested, language, yeah. yeah. Um, we do some work with them, though, to translate stuff. So, yeah. yeah. Do you do any work at all with, like, um, transla translators? Yeah, we, like, my English isn't great, so... I can tell, uh, yeah. Other, other languages are even, even worse. So yeah. we will usually work with them so that they do the translation. But what we are seeking to do is to say, okay, well, you do the translation, but we'll pay for your first print run and uh, we'll print way more than you would normally do because we're going to get the price down and we'll fund that. And with that first print run, that will fund your next print runs. Oh, wow. Because, you know, they, they often don't have money and, uh, and they, we just want to get it out. So that allows us to, to help them do that and then they can, they can crack on with their next print run having already recouped some money yeah. that, uh, that they got. Why do you live in Chicago, but have your oh, thing in Louisville? Yeah. yeah. Well, why do we live in Chicago when it's cold and there's huge taxes? Yeah. Um, basically because 
the guys who said you should come to America are based there, and so we went there. Mm. Yeah, I know. North Carolina would be a lot nicer. Maybe South would even be even yeah. better. But um, you know, you don't have to stay there forever. I know. You didn't but you sign believe like in the a local church, don't you? And we do they not have in. local churches? And turns but you're out, just you love this turns church. Out you're my committed. wife really likes the one we're at. So oh, bummer. <laughs> no, um, yeah, we just uh, it's where we are right now. And, yeah, um, we're on a five year visa, and maybe we'll review it in due course. But um, yeah. uh, but, but yeah, it's, our, it's cold and windy, so that. That, that does kind of remind you of home, does it not? Yeah, I mean, there's cold and windy, and then there's Chicago, and it's, <laughs> it's I mean, it's brutal. Br I really hate the cold as well. My um, my grandmother was from Armenia; she's Armenian, which is not a theological uh, right. position in this country, <laughs> and um, and so I've got that sort of I want to be a bit warmer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sadly, so yeah. you're ethnic. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I've got nicotine yellow skin. <laughs> um, so Louisville, that was really because we hired a guy who was at Lifeway, lived in Louisville and um, didn't want to move, fair yeah. enough. And, um, and then a warehouse came up and yeah, just Boom. kind of, yeah. It's been good though, because yeah. we can hit up Chicago churches and they can hit up Louisville churches and uh, meet in the middle somewhere. So. Has it been weird going from the UK, coming into the US church to see all the stuff that we fight about? The hardest thing I've found about coming to the US is the church. And we never thought that would be the case. Yeah. Culturally, it has been so, so hard. Yeah. We drive six miles from our church from our home <coughs> to our church. I think we pass 30 churches. We pass one road that within a mile, there are four churches. Two churches meet in the same building, but just at different times. So yeah. as we drive to church, there's a sign for one. As we drive back from church, there's a sign for another. And yeah, you know, I'm the son of an evangelist, grown up with that sort of passion for evangelism. I really believe that if we're to see a significant move of God in people coming to faith, gospel, Bible-believing churches that basically exist because they have a slight preference difference. Mm -hmm. That may be a theological, but a secondary theological issue or a, well, we like to sing after the sermon or we, we like to sing before this, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. We won't see a significant evangelistic move in our nation until we unite over the things that really matter. Mm -hmm. Because at the moment, I'm not saying church planters are seeking to, to do their own denomination, but with all these churches that work independently, it seems to me that it is about growing the numbers that meet in this building at this time, rather than how can we see people saved from hell? Mm -hmm. And I, I have to say these last 12 months, that has been the hardest thing in my spiritual life mm -hmm. is seeing churches. Really, yeah. really difficult. Yeah. Uh, what what uh, is your church an SBC church? What are you? It guys was Acts twenty nine. It, it's come out of that. It's it's an independent. It's kind of it'd be like a nine marks type church, yeah. but it's you know, <clears throat> it's not it's not a denomination in that sense. It's yeah, Bible believing independent church. You were a youth pastor. Do you yeah. have, are you an elder in your church? I'm not. No. Do you have aspirations towards that? I do not. No. Okay. No. Which <laughs> thankfully disqualifies me, which is great. It, you know, Bible <laughs> That's says the first qualification. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I have no desire for that. And I, you know, there are, there are things that I think, um, yeah, I, no, I'm I'm not to be an elder. I, I'm, that's why I'm grateful for what God has given me to do, small yeah. and whatever. But I'm I'm feel I'm in the right place. Well, it feels pretty big to me, brother. I think books change the world. Books change people's lives. Uh, the Lord could have uh, revealed Himself and through any number of different mediums, mm -hmm. He chose to reveal Himself through writing, which was collected into a book in His providence. And uh, yeah, I mean there is no reformation without book distribution. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, praise God for your work. Is there anything else you want to say to our, our, our viewers? Yeah. So two things I would say is if you are a small church or funds are difficult 
and you believe in the value of what books can do, yeah. write to us and we would love to support what you're doing. Tell us what you can afford or what you can't afford, yeah. how many you can use, and we'd love to do it. My email is jonathan at ten of those dot com. So you're not actually going to check that, right? Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan spelt the Bible way. I always like to say that. Okay. Um, the way God spelt it. Um, so Jonathan at ten of those dot com. We genuinely would love to, to support it. And I would say to pastors, think how you can use books evangelistically in a way that perhaps you don't currently. Yeah. Um, do you give every visitor a book that explains the gospel to them? They may be a Christian, mm. great, they can pass it on and it yeah. re-emphasizes it, em where, put the emphasis where you like. Um, <laughs> maybe they don't, and, but you've put a little seed and they, we want them to come in and hear the gospel but give them an opportunity to take the gospel away with yeah. them. If you can't afford that, put a tract in, two ways to live, whatever it yeah, is, so sure. you use that. And then if I may um, take the, the cheeky opportunity, you know, if you're in the States, shop with us, it's only a, a, a dollar shipping, no matter how much you buy. And you're basically tithing when you, when you shop with us because the money will go overseas. <laughs> but if you run an event or you're a church of 300 people or more, yeah. Invite us. There's no cost for us to come. We'll come and bring a curated bookstore. We'll make yeah. some recommendations and we'll get you church reading. For our uh, worship conference? Oh, yeah. There at you go. Jonathan at 10 of those dot com. That's right. Okay. My social security. Oh, no. Hang on. <laughs> you, you don't have one of those, right? I, well, now I've been able to you get do? one. You do? You got one? I do, yeah. yeah. Okay. And That's what good. is it? And um, so, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, um, but seriously, you, you've got a nice open foyer now. This, the fire is kind of <laughs> yeah. branch out. But Plenty seriously, we want to support churches that, hey, yeah, we could do this. We've got 300 women. Could you come to? Yeah, no charge. Just give us three minutes to make some recommendations. And it is unbelievable how many books can go out. Amen. Praise God. All right, brother. Well, let me pray yeah. and we'll wrap this Thanks thing up. Yeah. Lord, thank you so much for my brother, Jonathan. Thank you for the way that you have uh, equipped him to carry out a ministry like this. Thank you for guiding his hand. Thank you for leading him through dark, scary, turbulent times mm. in the development of this uh, ministry. Uh, Lord, thank you for prospering this ministry. Uh, everyone in this room and certainly who knows how many of our listeners we've had our lives changed by books and sometimes not even books, but by just even a sentence within a book, but mm. we wouldn't have heard that sentence if we hadn't picked up the book. So we, we just thank you so much uh, for everything that you're doing to advance the gospel through books and for raising up faithful brothers and sisters all over the world to get those books out. We pray that you'll bless Jonathan, that you'll bless 10 of those and that, uh, yeah, that, that, that it will only grow that, that translation, will be funded, that uh, printing will go well, that distribution will go well, that publishing will go well. Uh, Lord, keep them, keep them solid in the gospel. Uh, so many times money, the love of money uh, causes publishers to go sideways. We pray that you will keep them mm. in the love of God. Mm. And we pray this in Jesus's name. Amen. Well, amen. Amen. At 10 of those, we want to serve the local church by equipping your church family with great resources that are gonna point them to Jesus. So we'll come and set up a pop-up bookstore in your church, there's no charge. We'll come for your Sunday services. Maybe you've got a, a weekend retreat or a conference. We would love to come and then make recommendations. This is one I've read three times now. It's called Incomparable by Andrew Wilson. And he goes through 60 characteristics of God. It just wonderfully takes our eyes off, off the world, off ourselves, and puts them on our Saviour. Now we've got lots of things for families and, uh, and kids. For parents, I want to recommend this series. This one is Raising Kids in a Screen-Saturated World. Our passion is to get good books that hold the Bible read by as many people as possible. We handpick our bookstore, it's curated, so we know everything we sell will point to the Lord Jesus. Everything's discounted. And as we make recommendations, we're seeking to serve your church family so that they may be excited and equipped to read good books. And as they do, we'll be praying that it might just change their life.
let me record my immovable conviction that this is the noblest service in which any human being can spend or be spent. And that, if God gave me back my life to be lived over again, I would, without one quiver of hesitation, lay it on the altar to Christ, that he might use it as before in similar ministries of love, especially amongst those who have never yet heard the name of Jesus.